because God got a season for you. And if you trust in him, he's going to bring it to pass. And when he brings it to pass, God will blow your mind. Baptist Church, located right here in Atlanta, Georgia. We are so excited that you're with us this morning, and we're going to begin because we have an amazing worship service planned for you, starting off with our dynamic deacons, Deacon Jason Graddick and Deacon Roger Long. Good morning. Amen, amen. We'd like to say good morning once again. You know, it's, uh... Leading into the week that we celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And we just want to let the Lord know that we appreciate everything that he's done for us because he didn't have to do it. He didn't have to hang on that cross and he didn't have to rise and pay that price for our sin. So we just come to lift up his holy and righteous name to let the Lord know that we do appreciate. And Deacon, come on. Let's do it. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, Lord. This little light of mine, y'all, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, now, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, the Lord, let it shine, Lord, let it shine, the Lord, let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, y'all, I'm gonna let it shine. Well, this little light of mine, Lord. I'm gonna let it shine Well now This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine oh Lord, let it shine Lord, let it shine oh Lord, let it shine Everywhere I go Church I'm gonna let it shine Yes Everywhere I go Church I'm gonna let it shine well now everywhere I go y'all I'm gonna let it shine let it shine Lord let it shine oh Lord let it shine all in my home y'all I'm gonna let it shine yes all in my home y'all I'm gonna let it shine well now all in my home y'all I'm gonna let it shine oh Lord let it shine Lord let it shine oh Lord let it shine oh Jesus gave it to me church I'm gonna let it shine yes Jesus gave it to me y'all I'm gonna let it shine well now Jesus gave it to me y'all I'm gonna let it shine the Lord let it shine Lord let it shine the Lord let it shine oh you can't take it from me no I'm gonna let it shine well you can't take it from me no I'm gonna let it shine well now you can't take it from me no I'm gonna let it shine oh Lord let it shine Lord let it shine oh Lord let it shine oh this little light of mine y'all I'm gonna let it shine yes this little light of mine y'all I'm gonna let it shine well now this little light of mine y'all I'm gonna let it shine the Lord let it shine let it shine the Lord let it shine oh this little light of mine y'all I'm gonna let it shine yes this little light of mine church 
I'm gonna let it shine well now this little light of mine y'all I'm gonna let it shine oh Lord let it shine Lord let it shine oh Lord let it shine third chapter of Proverbs, beginning at the first verse. And King James reads as such, My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For the length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, yes. and lean not to thine own understanding. Right. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thy own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. The word of God for the people of God. That, that all the hurt say amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, our Father in heaven, how great is your faithfulness. And then too, dear Father, we just thank you for being God and God all by yourself. And what a privilege it is to bring everything to you yes, in prayer. Yes, Accepting that privilege, dear Father, this morning we come before you with thanksgiving in our hearts. Mm -hmm. We just want to say thank you, Father, for every good and perfect gift yes. that you have blessed us with. Oh, thank you, Lord. We thank you for life, dear Father. We thank you for a sound mind. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for food. We thank you for transportation. Yes, sir. Yes. And dear Father, we just thank you for our health being as well as it is. For all we have to do is look around, dear Father, and we can truly see that there are only two types of people in the world, the blessed and those that just don't know how blessed they are. So this morning, this congregation bows before you to say thank you, Father, for everything that you have done for us. And two, this morning, dear Father, we pause to say Thank you for this place called Mount Ephraim. Yes, sir. We say thank you, dear Father, for every member of the congregation, from the youngest all the way to the oldest, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father, for everything that they add that makes this congregation so loving and so peaceful, dear yeah, Father. Yeah. When we look at each member of the congregation, dear Father, we're able to see aspects of you, dear Father, and we count that, dear Father, a beautiful thing. We also pause this morning, dear Father, to say thank you for our pastor and first lady. We thank you for these two, dear Father, who continue to lead the church uh, by, by your word, dear Father, who continue to guide us and who continue to encourage us day in and day out, dear Father, constantly thinking of ways that they can spread the gospel in such a way, dear Father, where it will bring pleasure uh, to your ears, dear Father. And also, dear Father, we just thank you, dear Father, for the leadership of this church, from our pastor to the official board, to our chairwoman and our vice chairman this morning, dear Father, and every trustee and deacon that sits on the board, the, the, the official board this morning, dear Father. We thank you, dear Father, even for our officer's prep ministry, dear Father, as well. Yes. We thank you for each and every auxiliary, dear Father, that makes up this church family and everything that they do to make the worship experience fitting for a God like you, dear Father. And then, too, this morning, dear Father, we just pause, dear Father, to petition you on behalf of a sin-sick and dying world, dear Father. Every day, dear Father, our hearts break. We know, dear Father, that your word says that the, we will always have the poor with us. Mm -hmm. But that does not prevent our hearts from continually breaking, dear Father. So this morning, dear Father, we lift up those, dear Father, whose buggies that they push up and down the streets of this city contain everything that they own in life. We lift up this morning, dear Father, those who make their homes under bridges this morning, dear Father. 
We lift up those, dear Father, who continue to live in extended stays because they don't have anywhere else to go and they're barely making ends meet, dear Father. We lift them up this morning. We lift up those this morning, dear Father, that have fallen through the cracks of the social network, the social safety networks that were supposed to prevent them from going hungry during a time like this. We lift them up this morning too, dear Father. And for those little ones, especially uh, the little brown girls and boys, dear Father, those who were already lacking certain skills to begin with, this pandemic has done nothing but push them farther behind, dear Father. And in the name of Jesus, dear Father, we just ask you to be with them. We just ask for you, to, dear Father, to put in the hearts of the teachers who may be instructing them online to have patience with these little ones, dear Father. And then too, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, we just pray that you might continue to be with those who are incarcerated behind prison walls, as well as those in convalescent homes. With the raging of this disease that continues to go on, dear Father, they are in confined quarters, dear Father, and they have nowhere else to go. So we just pray, dear Father, that you might continue to protect them and keep them as only you can. And then too, dear Father, we just pray that you might send your word so that those who do not yet know you in the free pardon of their sins, dear Father, might come to accurate knowledge of you and what your son did on Calvary's cross. And then too, this morning, dear Father, we lift up those on Capitol Hill and even the White House, even the governor's mansion, dear Father, those who are in positions of authority in this country, dear Father. We pray, dear Father, that you might move their hearts in such a way where they might act on behalf of the people for at least once, dear Father, so that they might do the things so that people can make ends meet, dear Father. We know that they have the capability. We know they have the power. We know they understand the pain that's out there. So this morning, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, this congregation is appealing to you to move their hearts in the direction that their hearts need to be moved so that progress can be made in Washington. And then too, this morning, dear Father, we just pray that you might continue to keep your hands on all of those who are going to the polls and even those, dear Father, who are mailing in their ballots, dear Father. We just pray that you might continue to put your shelter over them and continue to protect them, dear Father. These are strange, evil, and difficult times. And there are strange, evil, and difficult people out there, dear Father, that some and some mean your people no good, dear Father. And again, we just pray for their protection. Yes. And then too this morning, dear Father, we realize with the state that we are in that we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. During this time of the year when we pause to remember the birth of your son, dear Father, many say that Jesus is the reason for the season. Yeah. But we stop this morning, dear Father, to say that he is not only the reason for the season, he is the reason for the reason. Yes. It is because of his birth, dear Father, that we know that one day we can live forever in paradise. And towards that end, this morning, dear Father, we just pray, just like that thief that was on the side of Jesus dying on the cross, we pray that you might keep us in your memory, for we know that the safest place we can be in this entire world is in your memory, dear Father. This morning, dear Father, this is the prayer that Mount Ephraim offers you. This is our prayer. And we ask all of these things in the name of your loving son, the one who is no longer Mary's baby, but a full-grown king of kings and prince of peace. This morning, dear Father, we ask these things in his name, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 How to reach the masses, men of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Lift him up, the Savior up, lift him up, the Savior up, till he speaks. From eternity, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. How to reach the masses, men of every birth. 
for an answer Jesus gave the key and I if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me lift him up the Savior up lift him up the Savior up till he speaks from eternity and I if I be lifted up from the earth I'll draw all men unto me for the world is hungry for the living bread lift the savior up for them to see trust him and do not doubt the words that he said i'll draw all men unto me oh lift him up the savior up lift him up the savior up till he speaks from eternity and i if i be lifted up from the earth i'll draw all men unto me for the world is hungry for the living bread lift the savior up for them to see trust him and do not doubt the words that he said i'll draw all men unto me why don't you lift him up the savior up lift him up the savior up until he speaks from eternity and i if i be lifted up from the earth i'll draw all men unto me oh lift him up the savior up lift him up the savior up until he speaks from eternity and i if i be lifted up from the earth i'll draw all men unto me amen amen lord we lift you up in hopes that you will draw all men especially those who don't know you we thank you so much for allowing us to serve you once again in devotion and praise this morning at this time we'll turn the remainder of the service back into the hands of our first lady evangelist lorraine jock white to god be the glory amen, amen. We thank our deacons for an amazing praise service this morning. Thank you so much. Good morning, everybody. You know we're excited because you're joining us. And we have a lot of information for you. And Dr. Angela Taylor is going to bring it to us right now. Good morning. On behalf of Dr. White, Sister White, and the entire Mount Ephraim Baptist Church family, let me take this opportunity to welcome you to our virtual 7.30 a.m. service. We pray that a song is sung, a prayer is prayed, a scripture is read, and a sermon is heard that will richly touch your heart. And when Dr. White extends the invitation of discipleship, that you give God your heart. And when we return as one physical unified body that you give Dr. White your hand, again, we welcome you to our 7.30 a.m 
a.m. service. If you celebrated a, a birthday today or in the past week, we say happy birthday to you. Sister Yvette Askins, Ro Brother Robert Strong, Reverend Joseph Howard, Brother Philip Dunwoody, Brother Michael C uh, Connell of the Mass Choir, Sister Carolyn of the Mass Choir, we say happy birthday, and Sister Debbie Lowe, we say happy birthday. And if I did not receive your name, please charge it to my head and not my heart and accept Mount Ephraim's birthday wishes. We would also like to say happy anniversary to those celebrating an anniversary today or in this past week. We pray that your anniversary was rich, richly, richly blessed. Mount Ephraim, these are your announcements. We invite you to join us for all of our weekly activities. We will have prayer, our pastoral call on Wednesday with our pastor at 7.30 a.m. Again, the telephone number and the access code is on our website and on our Facebook page. We ask that that you join us every Wednesday. We also have our worship on Wednesday with the pastor. We ask that you join us for that as well. On Saturdays, we have our power. That is at six o'clock. That is on Facebook Live. Please join us for that as well. On Sundays, 7.30 a.m. and 10.45, until the Lord says so, we invite you to join us for our virtual services here at Mount Ephraim on Facebook Live and on our live streaming by visiting our website, www.myme.com. BC Dot com. Again, please join us for our virtual services on Sunday, 7.30 a.m. and 10.45. Mount Ephraim, there's not a day that doesn't go by that Dr. White doesn't receive a phone call, text, email, or even mail asking how they can continue to support Mount Ephraim during this pandemic season. And we are greatly appreciative of all that you say and do and all of the words of encouragement. So for those of you who would, we ask that you download the Givelify app to your smartphone or tablet, select Mount Ephraim Baptist Church Atlanta, Georgia, and then follow the prompts to give. You can also go to our website, www.mybc.com, Select, click the donate button on the right side of your screen, follow the prompts to give. And for those of you who enjoy the more traditional forms of giving, we ask that you make your checks and money orders payable to the Mount Ephraim Baptist Church and mail that to Mount Ephraim, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. Again, that's Mount Ephraim Baptist Church, P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia 30314. We would like to thank everyone who helped on yesterday as we were able to help many families who requested help for the Christmas holidays. We would like to thank our special Christmas angel who donated $1,500 to Sister Diane Johnson for your donation. We also would like to thank you for that donation of $100. We would like to thank all of the Saturday volunteers for all that you did on yesterday to make sure that we were able to meet the needs of those families. To Dick and John Gamble and the brothers, we say thank you for making sure that everything got over to the church so that we can distribute it in a designated amount of time. To the greeters, thank you for being the hostess with the mostest and making sure that everyone felt welcome as they approached Mount Ephraim. We continue to say thank you and we appreciate you for all that you have done. Before I take my seat, I just want to remind you as Christmas approaches that yes, 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 Monday through Wednesday, you can vote before you celebrate your holiday and we ask that you do so. And we ask if you have your college students back and they are registered to vote, make it a family affair and go out to vote before you celebrate Christmas. Also, please remember that even though we have to celebrate Christmas in a different way, that Christmas is still Christmas. Jesus was still born, and we still have a, have a good reason to celebrate this holiday season. But as we do, I ask that you protect all of those with compromised uh, immune systems, and I ask that you protect the seniors. And I ask, again, that you protect the frontline staff and the first responders. How can you do that? Wear your mask, wash your hands, and practice social distancing even during this holiday season. And as you celebrate, celebrate Christmas, remember Mount Ephraim to remain Mount Ephraim strong. This concludes the announcements. Brother Roger Long.
Good morning, Mount Ephraim. It is no secret that the significance of religion in the lives of Americans has been declining over the past two decades. With that decline, we also lose important elements of what makes our religious traditions unique. Features such as lined hymns and the practice of call and response. We keep these traditions alive by continuing to practice them and telling our children why these rituals and traditions are important. The same can be said of the story of Mount Ephraim's founding. With the writing of Ex Nihilo, Out of Nothing, the author, our own Dr. White, has given us an amazing opportunity to peer into the recesses of his mind and take a walk with him as his relationship with God is developed and nourished and Mount Ephraim is born. You see, this work, Ex Nihilo, Out of Nothing, is important to all of us because this is not just Dr. White's story. This is our story, our history, for we are all Mount Ephraim. In the book of Deuteronomy at 11, 18, and 19, God encourages his people to remember the story of how he saved them, and he encouraged them to teach their children what they had seen so that it would not be forgotten. Today, with your personal copy of Ex Nihilo, Out of Nothing, by Dr. R. L. White, Jr., you have a similar opportunity. With this book in your personal library, you can accurately relay the history of Dr. White's ups and downs in life, the difficulty and blessings of ministry, and the founding of Mount Ephraim, our church, which I believe is the greatest church in the world. And for the sisters in the listening audience, or parents with daughters, the chapter on women in the ministry is unparalleled by any other autobiography discussing this issue. Our pastor is open and honest about the temptations of ministry, the danger of inflated egos, and the necessity of supporting women in ministry. Additionally, and most importantly, you get to witness firsthand the satisfaction of a life well lived in service to the Most High God. So, friends, this morning, I implore you to get the, I implore you to get your copy of the book Ex Nihilo, Out of Nothing, by Dr. R. L. White Jr. This book will be a great addition for your home library, or even the perfect gift for the intellectually curious that aspiring young minister, or that Bible student in your family, which again, should be all of us. The cost of the book is $9.95 plus shipping costs if you require mailing. Please call the church at 404-794-1470 for more information, or write to Mount Ephraim at P.O. Box 92351, Atlanta, Georgia, 0314. Additionally, there will be staff in the lobby of the main sanctuary today from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. to make the book available to you. I thank you for your time this morning, and it's my prayer that God may continue to bless all of you. We certainly want to thank Dr. Angela Taylor for those announcements, and what we're going to do on next week is on Wednesday, we will definitely have the pastoral prayer call, but worship on Wednesday, which is every Wednesday at seven o'clock, will not meet this Wednesday, which is December 23rd. Worship on Wednesday will not meet this Wednesday, but early in the morning at 7.30, the prayer call with Pastor White definitely will go on. I'm excited now because you know, there's just a few of us here and when I saw two dynamic people walking, I thought, now, who is this? You have to look at people real good with these masks on. I'm right next to people, not number, you know, you know me, not right, not right next, but six feet next. And I don't know who they are. And so I looked out there, I screamed, I said, now who is this coming up in here? And it was the chairman of the boat. 
Deacon to Sadie Scott and the first vice chairman of the board, Deacon Lloyd Morris. Let's give them a hand as they come to us. Good morning, everyone. It's a blessing to be here one more time. Uh, Dr. White and Sister White, on behalf of the official board, all of the members of the official board, we'd like to present you with this Christmas blessing. May God continue to bless you and our church. God bless you. Thank you, Deacon Morris. To our church family, the Mount Ephraim Church family, as we celebrate the Christmas season, remember the greatest gift wasn't under the tree, but was hung on the tree. Amen. May peace be to you and your family at Christmas and all your blessings be fruitful throughout the year. We wish you much love and happiness from Deaconess Sadie Scott and the Mount Ephraim Official Board. Happy holidays. God bless you. Let's give them a hand all over the world and all over Metro Atlanta. We certainly thank them for taking their valuable time to come out to our to the service this morning, so early in the morning. We're excited to see them, both of them. And they look good, too. Yeah, they dress to the nine. That's the way you say it. They are dressed, dressed, dressed. Well, I'm excited this morning because I looked for my dynamic Ladies who sing every Sunday, I turned around, they in the choir stand, so you know they have something special. So let's hear Dr. R.L. White Jr. and the R.L. White Corral. Let's see what they have for us this morning. Good morning, everyone. I asked on yesterday right, for the corral to okay. meet care. me, that, and I told them we wanted to do a medley of Christmas songs since we're not able to have the concert that we normally do, and I rushed them so fast through. I know they, they still remember it, but in case they don't, they're going to do it anyway. So wherever you are, you give this group. A great big round of applause.
by the angel born a lonely manger virgin mary chosen as his mother and joseph as his earthly father three wise men traveled from afar they were guided by the shining star to see the baby Tell it on the mountain. 
got some good news for you. We're going to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And I've got so many thank yous to give. I was glad to see I chair the board, our first vice chair, and they're working chairs. They're not just sitting down. And I want to say thank you. God bless you. <laughs> you heard Angela talk about that group yesterday that we couldn't celebrate knowing that there were some hungry people that Mount Ephraim didn't make a, an effort to alleviate some of the pain. This year, because of the, the virus, there was a limit on the amount of turkeys that we could buy. They only had one per person, so what we did, we gave each of them a $25 certificate. He said, now if you want a turkey, you go buy them. And it is our prayer that somebody's life has been made better because of all of these names that you heard. It says that we care. I want to thank Deacon Roger Long for before he says anything up, he sends it to me and make sure that it's, it's right. You know, he's a college professor, so you know he, he wants to be exact. Thank you so much. Brother Jason Graddick, thank you for that wonderful role that you play. Just before we get to your devotion, he's already on it. Thank you all so much. Thank Lorraine. She worked so hard the other night. I said, girl, you better go to sleep. She said, I got to get this thing out of here. And uh, I want to thank Dr. Taylor, who they kind of put it together so they'll know what's going to happen. And um, she was so high when she came home, she couldn't go to sleep. I said, you better go to sleep. And when it was over, she got home and, and fell right out. And never did come back together until <laughs> later in that evening, but it was worth it. Amen. And I want to say to, to her, to Dr. Taylor, to every one of those volunteers. And earlier this year, we did, I think, about three COVID uh, tests. And now my left for men united for Christ, led by Deacon Morris, they were here. And we had some, I forget how many boxes it was, but I never saw so many groceries in all my life. And it took us all day long. But we stayed in the Atlanta Baptist Ministers Union and the Antioch North Baptist Church. And I can't call all the names of Brother Watkins Funeral Home. We were able to supply them. And uh, I'm just as happy as I can be. And uh, last Sunday, when service was over, uh, I was presented with this suit I got on. I thought I'd better wear it today in another outfit by Deacon Jerry Alexander. Now, you know, he's the fashion guru here. And any kind of uh, uniform that we've always needed. He is always there. And when he came in, I was like a little boy at Christmas morning. That's for me. <laughs> <laughs> and he, I want to say to him today, and I hope he's hearing, thank you so much. 
been a hard year. And um, I'm going to take Lorraine and be gone for the rest of the week after today. During four services uh, a week can be taxing, especially when people are dying and you're going to their rooms. One thing, Deacon Larry, guilty. Jason had a box of gifts under his arm. I said, where are you going with all this stuff? He says, for you, I said, oh, Larry and his lovely wife never, ever fail to do that. Larry, thank you so much. Our prayer list is long. And we're going to take the time to call these names. I know we want to get out as fast as you can, but we can never get in too big a hurry to pray for those who are going through some things. Sister Sandra Alexander is going through surgery, I believe, tomorrow. Sister Milligan going through service tomorrow. Tamika Rice and her husband, and she's one of the ones who help with the ones in the hospital. She and her husband contracted that dreadful, horrible virus. And we are praying for them today. Brother Paul Simmons, we are praying for him. He had so many operations this year, but he calls every week to say the Lord is working a healing. We pray for Sister Florence Askins, Beverly Coma, Pat Smith, Ernest Henley, Diane Johnson. Amen. Our college student, Raven Young, who was tested positive over there in, in Alabama where she is going to school at the University of Alabama, Alabama U. Reverend J. Allen Milner, pastor of the Chapel of Christian Love, one of our members. He's gone home from the hospital. Mother Hamilton, we pray for you. Brother Alex Rogers on our staff of the Mount Ephraim Telecommunications staff. He says he's feeling better. Reverend Sister Ferguson's brother-in-law, Jesse Lamar Turner. We prayed for him on the prayer list last week, but the Lord called him home this week. Sister Alice Shepherd called me last Sunday that she had the virus. I didn't talk with her again this week, but I pray and hope that she's doing well. Sister Margaret Franks, down in Albany, all 10 people in that place, that family, are positive. We pray today for Reverend Charles Ties, who had an operation on Friday. Got a call from Reverend Wesley Cole last night. 
His mother died last night. And I continue today to, to pray for Brother, Reverend Brother Lee Franklin. It's only been a week. And he's the one who helps coordinates the funerals here and it seemed different that it was his time last week we pray for him I may not call all the names but I want you to know where I forget the Lord never forgets and he wakes us up in the morning gives us his right mind and I don't know about you but I'm grateful for that <laughs> and where, wherever you are today I usually say all right Sadie she tells me that she's standing by her bed every Sunday when we move she moves too God bless you all today When Jesus was hanging on the cross, there were two thieves, one on the right and one on the left. And one of the thieves said, when, if you really are the Son of God, why don't you get yourself and us down from this cross? But the other thief said, leave Jesus alone, for he has done no wrong. And he turned to Jesus and said, Lord, we're here because we deserve to be here. But when you come into your father's kingdom, remember me. right now and I know you, some of you are bedridden and some are grieving and America is grieving today but we can say to the Lord Father
in the most humble manner that we know how. We come, O oh God, because your word has said that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess. And we come, O oh God, right now saying thank you but just being God. Yes. And we know today that if it had not been for you, none of us would be here today. Yes. But because of your grace and your mercy, you let us live a little while longer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And then while we slumbered and slept all night long, you posted an angel by our bedside, told an angel to watch over us all night long and right early this morning mm -hmm, an angel touched us with the finger of love and we were able to see a day that we've never seen before we want to say thank you now. Thank you, Lord. And then, Lord, as we come, every one of us stand in the need of a blessing. Somebody need you to heal that broken heart. In the name of Jesus, somebody need you testing positive but we know you can speak a word today and this pandemic will have to go back where it came from and not only that some of us didn't rest well last night worried about the cares of this old world Lord, we know you are still in control. And what we want to ask you, what is the lesson that you want us to learn while we are growing through? Then, Lord, we thank you for this season. Thank you. For your loving son Jesus, who gave his life that we might have a right to the tree of life. And then, oh God, as the word goes forward, let somebody hear your word. Come crying, I yield. I cannot hold out any longer. When we've gone the last mile of the way, give us a home in your kingdom. Somewhere where the wicked shall cease from troubling. Somewhere where the weary shall be at rest. Somewhere where we can praise you throughout eternity. These and other blessings we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. We like to do our meditation hymn. Mirror my God. <laughs>
so much. And I've got to call the name of Sister Rasa today, Dolores. Amen. Who works very hard to our television staff. We thank God for each one of you. And the young woman who helped to type my latest book. I hope she's listening today. We say thank you for that. I want to thank each of you for your gifts. You've been sending some to the house. And when the board members came in today, it's just good to feel like you appreciate it. And I want to say thank you. There is a word from the Lord. The Old Testament book of Micah, chapter 7, and verse 19. He will turn again. He will have compassion on us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all of their sins into the depths of the sea. Amen. I want you to go to Psalm number 103 verses 9 through 12 Amen I want you to listen to these words as far as the east is from the West. So has he removed our transgressions from us. Amen. And like a father who pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame and remembereth that we are dust. Our subject today, why do you keep bringing it up? Why do you keep bringing it up? Some of my most rewarding moments with the Lord are when I'm in my shower. That's my special praying ground. Because there's nobody in that room but you and God. And one morning this week, I was meditating and praying, and I just happened to say in my prayer, I'm still sorry for the wrong that I've done in my life. And I was startled, like, I was shocked because God answered me right then. And he said, why do you keep bringing up stuff that I can't remember? Amen. And for the rest of the day, those words echoed in my mind, not just that day, 
but for the rest of the week. I heard the Lord as you hear me now. Then some undeniable truths began to evade my mind. And I decided that what God was doing was giving me the message for today. All right. And the question is, why do people keep bringing up things from the past right. in negative ways? I come to the conclusion that when you continually apologize and bring up things painfully from your past, if you prayed and you meant your prayer, All right. God already has forgiven you. And since that is true, why every time you pray, you bring up all the things that you've done in the past? All right. Amen. For well, I can reiterate the text when it says God throws your sins in the sea of forgetfulness and God remembers them no more that ought to be some shouting going on right now why do you keep bringing all of this stuff up that you've done since you were 12 years old all right I come to realize that remembering no more really remembering by not feeling the pain that you felt when you first remember I want to make this plain here amen in other words regardless to what you may do say or happen to feel when you get at peace with God then when you think about it it doesn't hurt anymore amen and I'd like to tell somebody listening to me today I know you regret your past the bad things but you need to stop concentrating on that All right. and start giving God the glory because his amazing grace yes. has kept us thus far Amen. I suggest that there are three reasons people keep bringing up stuff even when it has been years when those things happen. Now before I look at these three things, I want to tell you one of the most glaring examples of this generation that we have in our culture when somebody is convicted of a crime. They do the time, mm -hmm. and when they come out, it ought to mean that you have served your sentence. But they are still treated like criminals for the rest of their lives. Mm -hmm. You can make a mistake when you're 18 years old. And 30 and 40 years later, you go and apply for a job. And once they see you, they say, have you ever been arrested? 
and you say yes, then they shut the book on you. Amen. And the only way you'll be able to make it is go into business for yourself because you cannot get a significant job. And what this is saying is you will never be forgiven. Nor will we ever let you feel like a normal citizen. Why? Because you made a mistake. The last time I heard it, everybody Amen. makes mistakes. Only ones that are not making them are the ones that are already in heaven or hell. But if you're living, mm -hmm. you're going to make some mistakes. Amen. So let me go to these three reasons why we keep bringing things up. Number one, the reason I have not forgiven you is because I don't want to. You humiliated me, and nobody should be treated that way. What you did to me was so grievous that I will never get over it, and I blame you for running my life. All of the pain that I've gone through is because of you. And you don't seem to realize the pain you caused me. You don't seem to care. And you never even apologized. So I want you to suffer. I want you to feel the pain that you made me feel. For the rest of your life. I just made a powerful statement. Because I've learned that forgiveness is of the will. In other words, if you have the will, they used to say a long time ago, wherever there's a will, there's a way. There's a way. Secondly, the reason I cannot forgive you is because I cannot forgive myself. And it's easier to blame you for my pain which helps me so I won't have to face my own shortcomings. So I say, it's all your fault. Why is it you react so strongly in a negative way to certain people? Could it be the fact that when and what it is you hate about them is the same thing you unconsciously feel about yourself. Amen. Amen. There's a psychological defense mechanism called projection. Amen. If you look at a projector, there's something about that projector that can projected on the screen in front, in front of you. Yes. Whatever you see on that screen did not come from the screen. It's coming from the projector. Sometimes we have a tendency to project onto others yes, sir. what we are feeling about ourselves said to you before while being president of the Atlanta NAACP and they used to have some of these real high class banquets 
And I went to one and those people looked like they were so heavy they had more degrees than the alphabet had. They just walked heavy. And I made a decision. I said, I know what these people think about me. I'm going to do my little bit. I'm getting out of here. So they had us in a room. And I was kind of standoffish. I didn't want to get involved too much. But one in this sophisticated manner said, oh, are you the Reverend R.L. White that's on TV? I said, yes. My wife loves the way you preach. And if my wife loves you, I got to love you too. I said, what? Then somebody else said, I've been knowing you a long time. I heard you preach. And I was thoroughly surprised. And when I look back on it, now I understand. I was projecting onto them some of the thoughts that I felt about myself. Amen. Amen. So then, remember that everything begins and ends in your mind. All right. And whatever you give power to, it has control right. over you. All right. Did, did you hear that? Uh -huh. It all begins in your mind. Right. Amen. And whatever you give power to has control over you. And some of us allow others to receive our projection and, and we can point it on to them so we don't have to look at myself All right. but reality says that sooner or later you've got to look at yourself That's right. amen you don't have to tell me about it but just look at yourself number three some say the reason I keep bringing it up is because I'm not sure God has forgiven me. And the reason I don't know whether God has forgiven me or not is because I don't feel forgiven. All right. Amen. Hmm. But let me tell you this. Life is more than a feeling. There comes a time that you've got to be objective about the God that we serve because when you read in God's word and God says, I will forgive you, God is not going to hold that against you to anyone who comes to the Lord, regardless how bad, how mean you have been, he will forgive. You might not even feel forgiven, but then I want to know, how does feeling forgiven mean? What happens when you feel forgiven? There are some things that you've got to know. Amen. And I hear some people say, well, the reason that I keep reminding God that I'm sorry is because I want God to know that I'm real serious about what I did. But God is saying in Psalms 103 verse 12, So as far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. The child that you had out of wedlock, you still feel guilty about. 
I told you often we had a member three or four years ago who was on a dying bed. And I went to see her. She knew she was dying. And when I talk to people like that, there are some things I want to ask them. I said, is there anything bothering you before you leave? And all of a sudden, tears began to flow. And because I wanted to, her to go home with a clear mind, I said, baby, what's wrong? She said, when I was a child, I became pregnant. I wasn't wise, I became pregnant. And when my mother found out that I was pregnant, she made me get an abortion. And I have never gotten over that. I wonder, will God take me into heaven? because I'm about to leave here. I said to her, if God told you in his word what he will do, God did forgive you many years ago. And here you are near 70 years old, still holding on to that pain. In other words, why do you keep bringing this up? When I left her, it seemed like she had found a joy that she did not know that she could have. Amen. Some of us are just plain bitter. Everybody say bitter. bitter. Amen. I would like to explain to you today what bitterness is like. When we bought our house over 30 years ago, Lorraine had a little, little, I guess you'd call it a piece of shrubbery, just a little flowery looking something. And she planted it right next to the house. And for the next few years, it was a little tree and we didn't pay much attention to it. But something was happening underground. We didn't know, but the root kept growing. We couldn't detect it because I would cut the branches off and they would grow right back. What was happening was, underground, the roots were growing stronger and stronger until the roots choked out everything that was in its way. And the tree kept on growing. And after a while, it cracked our driveway. And I said, Lorraine, I gotta get rid of this tree. She, she said, I planted that tree. I said, yes, and I'm, I'm cutting it up. <laughs> and I finally had to find someone who would dig down in the ground and cut up the root so they wouldn't grow back. Now, that's what the root of bitterness is like. It chokes out 
the Lord in your life. It chokes everything, but you can't see it because it's underground. And those branches just keep growing, and the more it grows, the more embedded that tree is, and it destroys everything in its way. And some of you have been angry for a long time. And the root of bitterness, you, you, you did like me, you cut the limb off, but it kept growing back. And that's what bitterness does. To us, it's growing even when we don't know it's growing. Until sometimes it is so embedded in us that we cannot even enjoy being alive because I'm filled with bitterness. And you can remember with computer accuracy everything anybody ever did to you. Amen. That's why you're angry. You're easily upset. You upset more than you can be happy. Preach white. And only the Lord Jesus can get rid of that bitterness that you didn't know was there. I've done an informal study over 50 years. I think I've buried, eulogized some 2,000 or 2,500 people. And most of the time, when the young ones die, I've inquired about their early lives. And so many have said they were very bitter in their lives. Now here's what you gotta understand. Whenever you get upset, whenever you are hurt, there are chemicals that are released into your physical body. I can prove that to you. You hear them say sometimes that my adrenaline started going in my fight or flight. What they're saying is my emotions caused a physical reaction. Now suppose you have been bitter for many years. Every time you get to the depths of your pain, this chemical is released into your system. Some have had cancer. You can, you, you can study it from the doctors. That's why they ask you the first thing you go in there. Have you been going through something lately? Are you happy? What about your past? Amen. What I'm trying to show you is that bitterness can destroy your whole life. Uh, Jason, can I get one of these flowers here? This, this one set of just one, one out. Just take one out of it. I want to make an illustration. Now, when Jesus said in John 15, 4 and 5, I am the vine, and you are the branches. Come on, somebody. Now, if you abide in me, if you stay in the vine, come on, somebody, you can bring forth much fruit. But without it, and even though this is an artificial tree, but whenever somebody, anybody ever seen you in the flowers, 
and you look at them and you say, these are so beautiful. But in reality, they're dying. Why? Because they were separated from the life-giving giving quantities and qualities that grew on the ground. And they will not bear fruit anymore because they are no longer connected to the vine. I'm going to leave this up into the next service. Because that's where some of us are. I just cannot get over what my daddy did to me when I was 13. I can't get over how out of all the children my parents had, I was the only one they sent away to live with auntie. I can't get over the way I was treated. And some people are just bitter. Now what I would like to do today is to help you remove some of that bitterness in you because God cannot dwell in a heart that's filled with bitterness. So you got to make a choice. If you want to feel that way the rest of your life, go on and be bitter with your bad self. But if you want a joy that you have never felt before, I want to invite you today, even before I get through preaching, whoever you are, wherever you're listening, to ask the Lord to cut that root of bitterness away from you because I'm tired of hurting. I'm tired of being sick and tired. And I want some joy in my life. Now there's a difference between happiness and joy. Being happy depends on things. My deacon brought me the soup last week. I was happy because it depends on things. But joy says everything in my life may not be right. Like this, I'm going through something, but I got a joy that God got my back. So I'm not going to get so upset because now I know that God is trying to teach me something. And all of these trials that I've been going through. And today, I want to give you the greatest Christmas present that you'll ever have. I give you Jesus. I know you're saying I heard that all my life. But have you really given your burdens to the Lord? That's why we used to sing that song, take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Now, if you think you're going to go through this world without some trials and tribulations, you better wake up and smell the coffee. Amen. Job said, man, that's born of a woman. Short and filled with trouble. The older people used to say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. Amen. And that's why I recommend Jesus to you today I wish I could say that I've done no wrong I think that's why we preachers get folks so mad with us because we think 
and act like we perfect. But reality says we hurt like everybody else hurt. Come on, somebody. We are tempting like everybody else is tempted. But if you want the Lord to walk with you, if you want the Lord to change your whole life, you can start today. Make it up in your mind that I don't want to go through this bitterness anymore because it's already taking up too much of my life. And I got to get rid of it. And all that I have is my testimony. And that's the reason I love that song that says, uh, I came to Jesus just like I was. I was weary, I was wounded, and I was sad. Lord have mercy. But I found in him what the world couldn't give me. I found in him what money could not bring me. I found in him what power could not give me. I found in him a resting place and he has made me glad. Now that doesn't mean that I won't get upset sometimes. Everybody will get upset. But maybe that's why the Bible said don't let the sun go down on your wrath because it can separate you from the love of God. Paul, what do you have to say about it? He would tell you, yeah, Lord, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God because the Lord been too good to me. Anybody in here? Can you say that today? The Lord has been so much to me and I got to praise him wherever I go. If you don't like me, that's your problem. God told me to love you and when you love your enemy, you'll get joy like you never had before. Is there anybody in here who's been treated bad? Some of y'all look like, no, not me. But I got sense enough to know that everybody is going to go through something. And you can't handle it by yourself. That's why Jesus said, I leave my comforter with you. He'll comfort you while you're being healed. And that's why I want to tell him today, thank you for what you've done in my life. Thank you for how you kept me. Thank you. He never left me. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I want to tell you if Jesus is in your life, he'll turn your whole life around. You won't always be going around feeling regret and I'm still sorry for what I did 40 years ago. And the Lord is saying, now you got to admit now, first of all, that you're wrong. Many of us can't do that. 
And once you admit you've been wrong, call on the Lord in prayer. And Jesus said, this is why I came, to die for your sins, that I want you to have a joy like you've never had before. I'll be all right. So when I look back over my life and when the devil tries to bring my past up, I tell him, talk to the Lord about it because the Lord has made it all right. And what I'm saying, I'll be all right. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. After a while, over yonder, where that is.
make some sense to you today. I know a lady that got divorced some 30 years ago. She still is angry now as she was then. There comes a time, as I preached the other Sunday, that you got to move on. Because God wants you to have some peace. So when you think about your enemies today, you tell them, I'm putting you out of my life. You caused me too much trouble, and they don't want to go kick them out. Because your pastor told you today, God wants you to have Peace. some joy. Amen. Amen. I want to thank you for tuning us in. We get calls from all over the world, well, all over the United States. And the number has been growing each week. Thank God for that. And these people in here, you would think the whole church was full the way they're reacting. I thank God for each of you. Corral, let me thank God for you. I didn't know when I got them started that the time would come that we couldn't have, you know, we got some big choirs in this church. I didn't know that the time would come that we would have to use them. And I was cutting some CDs. I didn't know that I would have to use them in my house as we bring out the worship every Wednesday. I want to say to Sister Marilyn Mitchell and to the greeters, they showed up yesterday. Thank you for letting the world know that there is love at Mount Ephraim. And if you're listening and have not joined the church, give our clerk your name. What we're going to do is start seeing you as a member and when the church comes back together we're going to make it official. Again I want to say thank you for each of you for those gifts that you've been sending us official board. Thank you all. Amen. I feel like Santa Claus came today. <laughs> Let's get ready to go. I want to invite those of you who are watching us. My new book will be in the lobby. We will have someone out there between 10 and 2. Stop by. Pick up one, only nine dollars and ninety-five cents. Everybody ready? Roger, you ready? Let's go. Yeah. 
Now may the grace of our once crucified and risen Savior rest, rule, and abide with this his people now, henceforth, and forevermore, let us sing together. Thank you, Obesa. God bless you.